As you can see from this video footage, this cow's hoof is in a seriously bad way. This is the Hoof GP. Okay, so we've trimmed cow 447 a couple of times here on the channel now. This was the very first time we saw her. As you can see, it really wasn't in a good state whatsoever. We did everything we could to remove all of that loose and detached hoof horn from the inner claw and we attached the block to the outer one. She was walking slightly better, but as we're about to find out, not all was as obvious as it first seemed. This is her on the second visit. What we'd done during the first visit had worked and it had started to repair, but as you can see from this scene of our inside claw, it was getting worse. It was traveling and tracking up that inner wall, up the white line, right up towards her ankle. We removed a huge amount of hoof horn from her inner claw and this is how it was looking by the end of that trim. As you can imagine, she wasn't walking very well, but we had high hopes. She had a wrap on, she had the block on, and we had done everything we possibly could. So here she is today on our third visit. Let's get her in the crush and see how she's looking today because I'm optimistic. As you can see, she's actually put on some weight. She's walking fairly well, but that block will be kind of faking it. Come on, lass, come on, ah, 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 ah. Come on, come on. You see, the inner claw, the one that's hurting, is completely off the ground right now. So she's not putting any weight on it whatsoever, which clearly helps a lot with pain management. She doesn't want to go in today. Come on, come on, on you go, on you go. Come on, Frank, wild cows. <laughs> As Craig puts her down the race, we walk around to the front of the crush so we can catch her head. And that way, hopefully it all goes to plan. Push now. Push all the time. She's reluctant to say the least. You see, it's not as simple as just cleaning it. Look, I'm scrubbing that. Look, nothing's coming off. So a lot of this is just muck build up. Just gently try and scrape out all the muck so that we can decide what's muck and what's hoof horn. That's muck, that's muck, that's muck. So as I'm doing this, obviously I have the added bonus of uh, smell of vision I can smell this foot hasn't healed because I can smell rotting tissue. So while I am optimistic that she's walking miles better than she was because of our first couple of trims and the use of this block, I'm not sure this has healed. Listen to that. That rock, look, it's just crumbling. That's partly because this hoof is so high out of the slurry in the manure so it's drying out partly because of this blueness in Ireland they would call that blue stone here we call it copper sulfate that's the hoof bathing solution that they use on this farm to try to keep the cow's feet as healthy as possible you see along with hoof trimming them these cows are actually they have their feet cleaned and bathed in copper sulfate three times a week to try and keep the dreaded digital dermatitis at bay. There's lots of flaps here. You can see this is from basically the connection of the inner hoof horn 
to the laminae which are in there. Those laminae connect like little fingers. Fingers on the inside of the hoof, which is the kind of fleshy, meaty part of the hoof, if you like, and fingers on the hoof wall itself. And the interlock like this is an extremely strong connection. And here you can see that that's blown apart because of the infection, and we can see the striations. Good word. We can see the striations, which are the marks or the lines of where that has been stressed, stretched, and distorted. You can see all of the muck being flushed out. Quite satisfying, actually. I see all of the muck. There's no way we're getting it all. This is a sharp knife, I promise you. It's just rock hard. See, here's a little open portion here, a small sole ulcer lurking underneath. You can see these striations all the way down here. We need to remove these flaps because all that's happening, as you can see, is dirt and manure is getting trapped in between them. You can see it's open inside, because as I'm contorting this hoof horn, as it bends out of my way, some of the red stuff, the dreaded red stuff has appeared. These are among the most difficult lesions that we ever deal with because they travel so far up this hoof wall, and this hoof wall is growing from here downwards. It's not growing out of the way. So if there's a hole here, it needs to wait on this hoof horn growing all of the way and descending all of the way down this wall, which takes around 10 months in total. Oh, that was a nice cut. I like that. You see it's just getting higher and higher and higher up this wall. You can actually see, look. Believe it or not, it's a really good thing that this has come to the top because it now cannot progress any further. And if we do a good enough job of trimming this, it means that any hoof horn that is formulated, built or grown here will be in perfect condition because there's no cracks for it to follow and continue to separate down. It is highly possible and most likely probable that you're looking at this hoof right now thinking that there isn't a major improvement on the last trim of this hoof. But when we show you the comparison at the end, you will see the difference and the progression that this hoof is and hopefully will continue to make. Again, as I manipulate this hoof horn and it moves as I cut it, those little open lesions inside are being aggravated and are bleeding because of my moving the hoof horn around it. This isn't me cutting into it. Sometimes I sound like a broken record, don't I? <laughs> it's just so important that you realise that we can't cut into cow's feet. We can't cut into live tissue and if we ever do, it's a mistake, or at least it should be. We're getting closer to the end of this trim now, and all that remains to do is get rid of any loose and raggedy hoof horn to tidy up this trim and to reduce it in ways that completely take the weight, and therefore the pain, away from this claw. These small cracks wouldn't normally be removed, but as all of our weight is now on that block, 
it stands to reason that we might as well remove them before they become problematic. I smooth out the hoof horn with my grinder to make sure there are no high points if that block should fall off prematurely. So if we look at this hoof and compare it to the last trim, it has improved, there's no doubt about it, but it is still very far from completion. She's walking much, much more comfortably, and as a hoof trimmer, that is my exact purpose, to functionally trim these cows that are in pain or to functionally trim them before they get into pain, before they become lame and in pain. My whole purpose as a hoof trimmer is to make these cows more comfortable and as a result, they're more profitable for the farmer. Lame cows are not a profitable animal. Farmers across the world do not want lame cows. And if they have got lame cows, they need to do as much as they possibly can to overcome that lameness. Otherwise, they're just not viable as a business. Anyway, we're gonna wrap this up because there's a very small amount of digital dermatitis on this ulcer right here at the tip of my finger. We're gonna spray it down with iodine to, to help close it up even more. And we're gonna cross our fingers for next time. She is walking far, far better than she was. And that makes me really proud as a hoof trimmer. But as we can all see, she still really needs that block to do as much as it possibly can for her and to make her as comfortable as possible. We're putting her back in her shed, back with her herd mates, back to the feed fence and back to her bed right now so that she can be comfortable in her recuperation. Guys, if you want an update on this cow, cow447, then make sure you subscribe or follow this Facebook page. As for now, me, cow447, and Craigie Boy here, we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. <laughs>